Okay, how do I decide how to name something that has charms and multiple bonds? Well, first of all, the multiple bonds take precedence. So, however, I've already numbered that to determine where to label for the double bond is now the permanent numbering. So it kind of makes it a little bit easier once you've numbered something that has double or triple bonds in it that remains to be the same order that you order everything else in. Because in this compound, the longest continuous run is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Um, we would say octene. And we number where this double bond is. Um, and of course, counting 1, 2 from the right is lower than counting 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 from the left. So we call this a 2 octene. By calling that a 2 octene, we've established the numbering goes from right to left. And therefore, this charm of three carbons, which is called propyl, is off of the one, two, three, four, fifth carbon. So once you have set the numbering based on the double bonds or triple bonds, that sets the priority and everything follows that same order. Let's look at this diagram and you'll notice that I will have numbered the longest continuous run as this red set of carbons. And that would mean that the double bond is closest to this bottom carbon. And that would make this a one decking. Because that's a one decking, then I would simply call this a number four methyl and this is a number 7 ethyl. How do I decide which way to name those? The same as you were told in the previous video, which is alphabetically. Since the ethyl charm comes alphabetically before the methyl charm, this would be 7 ethyl, 4 methyl, 1 decking. This would be if I count my longest continuous run, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, I actually could have either counted straight and over or up and over and down. Either way would have been 7. So I'm going to be a heptadiene because I have two double bonds, so that's where the dye is coming from. The prefix is right before what you have two of, so I have two enes, so that's why it's diene. And where are they, those dienes? If I count starting at this carbon, they are at 1, 2, um, 3, 4, at 2 and 4. And if I count this direction, they would have been at 1, 2, 3, and 5. Since 2 and 4 are less than 3 and 5, it is a 2, 4 heptadiene. That's its last name is what I'm calling it that, a 2,4-heptadiene. What's its first name? That's all the things hanging off of it. So at, because I've already established it going from basically left to right, um, that is the same way that I order my charms. So at 2 and at 5, there are single carbon charms. A single carbon charm is called methyl. Because there are two of them, it is a dimethyl. So this would be a 2,5-dimethyl, 2,4-heptadiene. The 2 and 5 tell me where the dimethyls are located. And the 2 and the 4 tell me where the dienes are located. And the hepta lets me know that there were seven carbons in my main chain. This is a 5-ethyl-2-methyl-7-propyl-2,5,6-decatriene. Um, 
These charms are listed here in alphabetical order, E before M before P. You'll notice the number has no bearing on the order. The 5-ethyl is becoming before the 2-methyl, and that comes before the 7-propyl. Where are my double bonds? My double bonds are at 2, 5, and 6. Because there are three double bonds, it says TRI in front of the letters E and E, which signify the, trip, the double bond. It, the TRI is telling me three of them. DECA is how many carbons are in my longest continuous run. I determine the numbering based on the double bonds. So if I would have counted from top to bottom, I would be at 2, 5, and 6. That number is lower than counting from bottom to top, which would be at 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 8. Always count with the lowest number winning. So that's how I decided once that numbering was created, from then on, each time I counted something, it was based on the numbering of my original numbering to determine double bonds.